Hello and welcome, my name is Meeples, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today I'm going to be talking nonfiction November, highlighting some books and comics I've already read and you might find interesting, and some books I'm currently working on. I don't think I've mentioned this in a while, but I personally feel like nonfiction books really benefit from including pictures, whether they be of people, things, or attempts to diagram concepts. I don't see why any nonfiction book doesn't include pictures. So I would say you should all give them a try if you aren't already converted. Some of the books I've read since last nonfiction November include the almost entirely silent, except for some historical documentation, comic Nat Turner by Kyle Baker. Other Rushes by Victoria Vomasco was an extremely rewarding read after many years of procrastination. A Quick and Easy Guide to Sex and Disability by A. E. Andrews, a pretty self-explanatory but short and punchy. Kent State, Four Dead in Ohio by Durf Backdurf is a much more recent publication that lived up to the hype. Red Rosa, a graphic biography of Rosa Luxemburg by Kate Evans, was neither as good as it could have been or as bad as some made it out to be. Fun! Dance After Ten by Vivian Chong and Georgia Weber is a unique graphic memoir about moving and change and disability, among many other things. Set in Toronto. Last but not least, the first review copy I was ever sent, without having to ask for it, Primo Levi by Matteo Mastrug. Cosino and Alessandro Rogeski, published by Between the Lines. Five star nonfiction, not comics, I've really appreciated this past year. If that's more your speed, include Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall, Debt, The First 5,000 Years by David Graeber, Medical Apartheid, The Dark History of Medical Experimentation on Black Americans from Colonial Times to the Present by Harriet A. Washington. Malcolm X, A Life of Reinvention by Manning Marble, Conditional Citizen on Belonging in America by Leila Lalami, Ace, What Asexuality Reveals About Desire, Society, and the Meaning of Sex by Angela Chen, Unsettling Canada, A National Wake-Up Call by Arthur Manuel, Sincerely, Your Autistic Child, What People on the Autism Spectrum Wish Their Parents Knew About Growing Up, Acceptance and Identity by Various. I Wasn't Gonna Tell Nobody, The Making of a Black Theologian, as well as The Cross and the Lynchin Tree by James H. Cohn. A Knock on the Door, The Essential History of Residential Schools from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada. Black Water by David A. Robertson, The Girl Who Smiled Beads, A Story of War and What Comes After by Clementine Wamaria. A Handful of Earth, A Handful of Sky, The World of Octavia E. Butler by Linnell George, Half-Breed by Maria Campbell, Dear Santhurin, A Black Spirit Memoir by Akweki Amezi, and Split Tooth by Tanya Tagak. A long list, but a good one. And while they are not universally available, thanks to the so-called free market. I would highlight that each of these five-star books also has an audiobook edition, because that's the only way to read. Nonfiction is one of those genres that I used to find incredibly tedious, but have really enjoyed in the past couple of years. As someone who wants to know everything about everything, it is helpful. Moving right along, I do actually have some nonfiction comics reviews coming out soon as well. First off, my second review copy from Between the Lines, Wonder Drug, LSD in the Land of Living Skies by Hugh D.A. Goldring, Nicole Maria Burton, and based on the research of Dr. Erica Dyke. I've also read and now need to review The Fire Never Goes Out, a memoir in pictures by Noelle Stevenson, and I am currently working on my way through Footnotes in Gaza by Joe Sacco. Graphic novels in my TBR basket include Our Stories Carried Us Here, a graphic novel anthology, Because IPCC, History and Science of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, Knock Out, The True Story of Emile Griffith, and The Black Panther Party, A Graphic Novel History. Looking at my Libby Q, currently I have, in no particular order, ADHD 2.0 by Edward M. Hollowell, MD, You Can't Be Neutral on a Moving Train by Howard Zinn, 
Our History is the Future by Nick Estes, The Art of Gathering by Priya Parker, The Confessions of St. Augustine by St. Augustine, Madame President by Helen Cooper, and Facing the Lion by Herman Viola. I always bite off more than I can chew, so I certainly won't get to all of these, but I keep renewing or putting them on hold until the time comes. And that's all they wrote. Thank you for letting me info dump on you about stuff I like. Anyone else have nonfiction November plans? By all, keep reading an organized and capitalist oppression. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation. 